Welcome back to the Ross Boland Podcast. I mean it. Welcome back. I'm Ross Boland, and I'm here with Jared Borslow. J-Bone! I am a happy little clam, Ross. Why is that? My Wisconsin Badgers uh, won the Big Ten last I night. I saw y'all did something sports-related mm-hmm. via the Twitter, mm-hmm. which has a lot to do with today's show, the Twitter. But congratulations to the Wisconsin Badgers winning the Big Ten last night in basketball, men's basketball. Mm-hmm. Now, the, now, we won at least a share of it. If we win out, if we win our next game, we win it outright. But we've clinched at least a share, which is a pretty weird thing. Cause, uh, yeah, what? Yeah. We, we clinched at least a share. So we won a the Big share. Ten. Yes. What the fuck do you mean? Can you tie? Yeah, we could tie. With at, who? Uh, Illinois. What the sh... Okay, but... Oh, isn't there like a... What? Yeah, I'm still celebrating, though, because we're going to win the next game. It'll be fine. Is that a thing that can happen in NBA divisions? Like, can you split a division championship? I don't know. I don't watch NBA. Right? I only watch nice little 18-year-olds running around with their tight little asses. Yeah, I can't stand college basketball. I love March Madness, which we're approaching rapidly. Rapidly. Now, I will say one last thing. You know, I don't want to gloat on Wisconsin too much. The Purdue coach after the game was really mad, and he called us a bunch of losers because he's like... Both of our last two baskets were unintentional bank shots. Damn. College basketball has been contemptuous lately. Yeah. Fucking Juwan Howard. Wisconsin. Choked, like, he, like, open hand slapped a man in the face. He slapped our assistant coach. We have a serious issue in sports with the difference between a punch and a slap. I agree with that. That was like, not you do a, a punch. punch. <laughs> Everybody who's saying a punch is like, oh, come on, guys. That's... If you have it in super slow-mo in 8K of him open hand slapping the man, it's like he tried to rip his face off, kind of. He's ripping his face off. It was a weird move, honestly. But I, it, uh, I don't. Okay, it's one of those things like heated basketball. Juwan, you're probably going to get in as much trouble whether you slap or punch the guy. So you might as well just fucking sock him. You know, or, or rip an eyeball out or something. Yeah, don't gouge. go for the whole face. That's an unrealistic goal. It's like in UFC. Go for the unintentional eye poke. Like, oh, I, I didn't mean to. My hand. It was just no, a you hand. You hit him with the three stooges, man. Just, <laughs> just boom. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, <laughs> right? <laughs> just one finger each eye. Peace <laughs> sign to the eyes. Boom what it is it's the opposite of peaceful yeah it is it's a act of war some might say speaking of war jared i just watched president joe biden's first state of the union address for the second time i had to watch it twice because i have just today begun my campaign to become the most informed and correct american living after making a grievous error in judgment last night by asking questions about the president Online. That was your first problem. Yeah, after taking like at least three whole minutes to consider the blowback, as is my protocol with every single tweet I send, while watching the State of the Union last night, I asked Twitter, and I quote, Not hating, but Biden definitely developed a speech impediment of some kind, right? Now for starters, I intentionally began my tweet with not hating. Uh Uh-huh. Which is supposed to be even more powerful than all due respect. (laughs) So I thought I put myself in a good position to counter any fervent Biden fans that might attack me, but I was wrong. Within minutes, I had more replies to that tweet than anything I've said online in months. Mostly people calling me a moron or telling me to kill myself. Uh, Even got a text from our legal counsel, which is spelled with an S, I might add, and my good friend B. Rankin, who, uh, within seconds of sending the tweet, my phone lights up with a text message from him. People were up in arms. Can you read the tweet? I did. That was the whole tweet. Oh. It was, so Not was, hating, but Biden definitely developed a speech impediment of some kind, right? Oh, so there was no like incendiary comment or snarky thing you said? No, that was it. That was the only thing I said. And people were irate. Jared, you even replied, fuck you, Ross, you insensitive dickhole, you piece of fucking shit. Go die in a ditch, you absolute steaming turd. Unbelievable fuck you. <laughs> do you not remember this? No, I do. Uh, I, I just wanted real people to really understand how completely <laughs> innocuous your, your tweet was. And just to drive home how I could not stop laughing. When I was reading the replies, I was crying. <laughs> Bro, okay, well, I had to send a follow-up <laughs> reply to my own tweet and say, all right, people are pissed that I asked. I had no idea he had a speech impediment since he was a child. Never noticed it before his presidential run. Chill. I mean, it was bad. One guy replied, knowing you and your tweets, I can see how people (laughs) might think you tweeted this in snark, but I can see you were wondering and you got the answer you wanted, which is true. I definitely got the answer I wanted. It was just with mostly violence. 
and also some some pretty funny humor and memes. But lots of replies. Anyway, it was chaos. Just chaos. And look, here's the thing. Joe Biden is nearly 80 years old. And he's been in politics literally my entire life, since before I was born. I, honest to God, did not notice his speech impediment until he ran for president and won. And I kept my mouth shut because I genuinely thought the old man had incurred a mild stroke or something and was trying to be polite. But when nobody seemed to acknowledge it ever, I finally had to ask on Twitter. But I genuinely didn't know the old man has a speech impediment. I didn't know. Not hating. Not hating. No touching. Not hating. And there is just no way that it hasn't gotten significantly worse the last few years. Or I would have noticed. Prior. I would have noticed. B. Rankin pointed out that the more you have to talk publicly, the more difficult it is to keep your impediment under wraps. And that makes sense. I've seen a King's speech. In all seriousness, the funniest part of the whole debacle with me not knowing Biden has a speech impediment was seeing the violent response from people on Twitter, even after the president's speech, like the majority of it was focused on unity and coming together as Americans. And I'm happy he has a speech impediment because I literally just thought he was becoming a senile old man and was genuinely concerned about his mental health. This makes me feel much better. And I have nothing against speech impediments. I would never make fun of someone for a physical or health-related challenge they battle unless that someone was Tucker Carlson. And his battle is he's really attracted to sexy M&Ms. Yep. That's one of them. It's also severely detached from reality. Probably severely disassociated and doesn't even know it. Do you know who I wish was giving a State of the Union last night? Like, you know, politics aside. Yeah. Jeb Bush. Well, <laughs> for a number of reasons. Number one, do you remember when he was running for president and his campaign slogan was just his name with an exclamation point at the end? Jeb. Jeb! 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 <laughs> and I do remember, Jared. And it then it's very funny. The one thing I dislike the most about the State of the Union. It's the only word to describe Jeb's presidential run is funny. I hate in the State of the Union how, like, it's if you're a Democrat and the president's a Democrat, you have to clap all the time. And it's and like stand and clap. And yes. And so what I what I think Jeb Pelosi the, kept awkwardly like half standing in the mid, middle of like she was like the only person standing at different parts. Like exactly. She knew what was coming clearly before anybody else had heard it. She's like, oh, this is my favorite part. And just went ahead and went ahead and stood up. It was like, Nancy, wait. Exactly. And it's very disingenuous. It's very partisan. Now, what we need is a president who's willing in the middle of a speech to say something and then tell people when to clap. Like a, like a cla instead of a laugh track, it's a clap track, right? So we'd have Jeb Bush be like, the Russians will not be tolerated. Please clap. That's yeah. what we need. Yeah, I'm with that. Cut out the BS. Jeb, Jeb. But with Biden, it legitimately hurts my soul watching him speak because I can tell how much it bothers him when he gets caught up. And that's why I tweeted what I tweeted. I'm a super empath, goddammit. Respect my authority. How was the rest of the speech? It was solid. Overall, I thought the speech was solid. Like, I, I love the strategy of having him talk through the applause so it's harder to make out what he's saying exactly and makes him <laughs> seem, seem stronger and more assertive. It's like somebody who's like talking their way through the exit music at the Oscars. Yeah, yeah, but like image is everything with the presidency. And for President Biden, the challenge is looking strong and confident instead of old and potentially demented. That is the challenge. Funny as it may sound when I say it out loud. It's and like a weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite to that point, but it's close. We're, we're getting there. I thought he seemed more strong and assertive last night than he has in some time, to me personally. And at a time when we really needed it. Like, in the past couple of weeks, ironically, I had no idea the state of the union was approaching um, at all, which makes me laugh. But the last couple of weeks, I've been bitching. I'm like, why doesn't this old man say something meaningful? Like, say something meaningful. We need it. It's been hell. And now a war? Fucking say something so we can get fired up. And I felt like he did that. And I was stoked. Here's what I hate about the State of the Union, though. 
when is the last time the State of the Union was anything but strong or whatever the fuck they always say? The State of the Union is strong. The State of the Union is very good. Like what? Can we can be like nobody's ever like guys? We are in a real pile of shit here, <laughs> and I don't know if we're going to be able to dig ourselves out. <laughs> this is this isn't good. We are we are mildly fucked currently, and we're really going to need to make some serious changes as a society, or this might be over. I mean, he did speak a lot to like defending democracy and making that a pivotal piece of the the entire message he delivered. Like, which to me is a really important thing right now. Not, not even just in Ukraine, here. Like, it's an important thing. The whole fucking country, you know how many times I had to hear the word democracy growing up in school that we all did? Because it's supposed to be the most important thing about this country. And I like that he made that a focus. Even as he stuttered along through it. Actually, at the time, I didn't, because I didn't yet know he had the speech impediment, so I was still like, fuck, dude, I really do think he had some kind of a mild stroke. And I know that makes me a bit of a dick to assume that just because he's old. He's really old. But it's also the most likely thing if you didn't know he had a speech impediment. I, I think that you were completely in the right to, to question that after watching him speak. However, after you asked it, you then became a total dickhead. Yeah, I know. It's, and that's fine. I can live with that. I educated some of us. I know there are people listening Me. who had no clue. <laughs> And now we know. And I got to be the perfect level of virtue signaler where you actually taught me that he had a speech impediment, but I still got to talk shit about you and call you a fucking asshole. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I love that. Like, you, I learned something with you, but because I'm not the one who learned the lesson, I get to completely fucking roast you. To, to your point, though, it is insanely difficult to make the State of the Union not boring, no matter what's going on in the world, because it's very long and you have to cover a number of different topics and it's just... There's just a lot. So, like, one thing from last night that I was actually surprised by was the talk of all these burn pits that have been giving soldiers cancer and diseases in Iraq and Afghanistan. Holy shit, what a mess. Did you did you hear about this? You see this? I hear about this? Uh, I, I saw people go, what's a burn pit on, on social media? Well, it turns media? out there's these pits that they're just burning all the gear of war, you know, which I didn't know that was a thing. Gears of war? Like, it's just like, all right, war's over. Dig a pit. Throw all the gears of war, all the different machines and the guns and the shit. I don't know what the fuck's in there. But then just burn it. And then, they w unfortunately, they were like, and we'll just set up camp 15 feet away and hope that none of the stuff in the air is harmful. Wait, so why don't we keep the stuff and reuse it? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to why the fuck anybody would have to post up right next to it, which was apparently the case with a lot of people. And a lot of them have gotten sick. That's uh, why the fuck they don't know if we're making uh, them do that. Biden said that even he doesn't know if even his own son, who had brain cancer and passed away, uh, was the result of the burn pits. Because apparently they were doing that. It, this is a long-standing thing that we've. It's not just new to Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, so they're currently trying to get to the bottom of it. Who knows what that actually looks like? Just okay. In, just in burning DC, stuff, but instead of bringing it like back and reusing it, reminds me of I have like a. I think it's either, just fucking leave it like they do with the Olympic villages. Who cares? I have a an uncle who, if there's like loose, you know, how, like loose change doesn't really exist anymore. You know, sure. Like how often have you? When's the last time you bought something and got change back? Like, you can't just leave weapons. I'm rethinking my strategy, but um, yeah, you can't just leave it. But no, I don't use cash to buy anything ever. I had an uncle if there was he like you know he had loose change in the counter and he just he'd literally swipe it into the trash can. Look, I won't lie to you, Jared. I've thrown a lot of change in the trash. <laughs> All right? I don't like loose change. All right? I don't have somewhere to put it. The piggy bank is full. All right? That, that's not the point of a piggy bank. The point of a piggy bank is you fill it up and then you go and... Never. So it, that thing's getting buried with me. When's the last time you used a coin sorter? I used to love doing that oh growing up. Oh, my God, dude. I used to use coin sorters to go buy weed. Really? Yeah, when I was in high school, man. You I paid was... for weed with a fucking roll of quarters? No, 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 no. Fuck no. What? No, hell no. I'm talking about the thing in the grocery store where you dump all your coins into it and it gives you cash. Oh, and the you coin go star. pot with it. That's a coin star. Yeah, that's co that's what I'm talking about. What are you talking Oh, a man, probably when I was 10. Yeah, a coin sorter is where you put the little, you have the little, yeah, it baby. looks like a Chinese finger trap and it holds quarters and you stick it in the machine and you drop all the coins in and it sorts it into the different thing and then you have a roll of quarters. Why did we all have to do this as kids though? Why did we all do this? Because credit cards weren't that big and so there's a fuckload of change. Yeah, but always. why were we all doing this as kids? Like nobody's done this as an adult. No, because nobody uses change anymore. You think we would still be doing it? Yes. 
Really? Yes. 100%. I thought it was just because we thought it was fun as kids. No, it literally, the reason why you do it is because you, pot. You, you acquire so much change that you then take the roll into the bank and then you exchange it for money or they put it in your account. Yeah, whatever, man. Here's some... <laughs> People used to fill up Culligan bottles with change. What and the fuck is a Culligan bottle? Now I have to ask this question. You know the massive blue jugs of water? We used to have them at the old office. Ozarka? Well, yeah. Culligan is, is the name of the, of the people who make the dispenser. And they, they bring refills of it. But anyways, you know those massive jugs? No, it's Ozarka. Ozarka is a, specifically a Texas water company. Sure. But they bring the big jugs. They can. Big jugs. <laughs> but yeah, but people would fill those up with change, and then after they'd fill them up, they'd realize that it now weighs like 120 pounds, and they can't actually move it. I feel like Kevin probably spills one of those in an episode of The Office. That's chilly, though. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Anyway, here's some facts about the uh, State of the Union from the internet. It says some presidents go short in their State of the Union addresses, while others go very long. Washington, that's George, holds the record for brevity using just 1,089 words in 1790. That's slightly longer than a typical newspaper op-ed. That's more than we write for every podcast we do. Uh, less than we write for every podcast we do. Yeah. George? the hell? Among presidents since LBJ, Richard Nixon holds the record for the shortest State of the Union speech. His 1972 address clocked in at a shade under 29 minutes. Lazy. Still kind of long. This podcast is almost 29 minutes already. Yeah, but it's not scripted. No, it's 19. Well, it's, it, there is a rundown, but it's right, like 17, 16 minutes so far, if I had to guess, based on the clock to my right. Carter holds the record for the longest State of the Union address, his 18, or I'm sorry, 1981 address, which he delivered to Congress in writing rather than in person. What? Ran 33,667 words. That's almost the length of the book I wrote, which made the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> Wait. He wrote a 33,000 word. There's no way he wrote Psychopath. it. Psychopath. There's no way he wrote that. Also, people forget Jimmy Carter is still alive. That was the last time the State of the Union was delivered in writing, by the way. How is Jimmy Carter still alive? He was president before I was born, by like two. Is he, though? Yes. He still does like Habitat for Humanity, and he's like 97. Jesus. Chill out, Jimmy. He's just a peanut farmer from Georgia. <laughs> People like to talk shit about him. They say he's a bad president. I don't really know anything he did, but I just know he's a peanut farmer. I don't know anything about him either. I wasn't alive, and I'm not particularly... He, he's a boring president, but he, you by weren't, my estimate. You weren't alive for Jimmy Carter? Fuck no. What? I could have sworn you were alive. When was he president? I don't know. I wasn't alive. Before I was alive. Was were you a Reagan baby? Uh, Maybe. Master of Reaganomics. Yeah. It's a Kendrick Lamar line. Um, but I don't stop asking me fucking questions. I don't know the answer to Jared. What's your mother's maiden name and what street did you grow up on? I was about to answer the first one, but then I just realized <laughs> the implications. But I grew up on Deep Spring Lane. Oh, okay. what, was, what was the make of your first car? And did you have a favorite friend growing up? It was a it was a blue Ford Expedition. <laughs> That's the only answers to all my password hints you get. Yeah, but those are real. So you got to like you got two. Two password answer start. What was the name of your first pet? <laughs> Fuck off, Jared. <laughs> Clinton holds the record for longest State of the Union address delivered in person, whether it's measured by the number of words, 9,190 in 1995, or the time it took to deliver. One hour, 28 minutes, and 49 seconds into the year 2000. Which I remember watching and going, holy fucking shit, this is boring. Yeah. I do not care or know what he is talking about. And if you're still in that phase of your life, it's okay. This is one of the first ones I've ever watched where I knew every single thing he was talking about, except for the burn pits. Those were a surprise. But every single thing he was talking about, I was like, I know what this problem is, and I actually care about it, and have a, an opinion on it. I know what this problem is, I actually care about it, and have an opinion on it. That has never happened. I'm 30 fucking four, dude. Yeah. But again, I didn't hit puberty till 27. I feel like for like 20 years there, it was just about health insurance, which like I never <laughs> had to deal with for a while. It was about health insurance for a minute. Like at least... <laughs> At least 10 of those motherfuckers were about health insurance. Health insurance, health insurance, health insurance, health insurance. And then before that, terrorism, terrorism, yeah. terrorism, 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 terrorism. So, And then the terrorists came for our health insurance. And then it was did. never the same after that. It was never the same after that. The funny thing about health insurance and like not having universal health care is like, it's essentially everybody just betting that they're not going to be the ones who need it. You know? 
It's like, no, I don't want to have to pay money so that Johnny the fucking fat ass can get a gastric bypass surgery. It's like, yeah, but what if you get, like, cancer, dude? And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm the pinnacle of health. I've never had that conversation with anyone. Oh, just me? I just go, oh, fuck, I have to get health insurance again. And then I get on that website and pick the cheapest one and walk away and then never go to the doctor. Knock on wood. I just have mental health struggles. <laughs> no physical health struggles. You're the peak of physical so health. So far. I am the peak of physical health. I'm just the spitting image of poor mental health. <laughs> In closing, President Joe Biden's, ha he has a speech impediment. And nobody is allowed to not know that moving forward. <laughs> You're welcome. Today's episode is brought to you by Felix Gray Glasses. Five years ago, Felix Gray set out to create eyewear that would improve daily screen time. And since then, Felix Gray has been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. Their lenses filter 15 times more blue light that can make screen time tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. I've been working on the internet for over a decade now, spending like 10 hours a day staring at screens and my eyes get worn the hell out. And when I'm done with work, I like to relax by watching my favorite shows and movies and gaming, gaming rather all of which involve screens. So a couple few years ago when I was introduced to Felix Grey, everything changed. These glasses are the quality of designer frames. It's not some cheap blue light coating painted over them that's going to chip off. That never happens. There's no chipping. There's no cheapness. Just incredible quality designer frames that are stylish and functional as they protect your eyes from all the blue light that screens we rely upon emit. So guess what? I was in California this past weekend. California. My mom whips out a pair of her Felix Grays. Wow. Yep. Look at that. She's using it for, she likes to use it at night when she's on her phone in bed. I hope she went to felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP in support of the podcast. Oh, she did. Mama Borislow. She did. I have like six pairs of Felix Grays now. Two of them are behind me on the shelf, uh, so y'all can see them if you're watching on YouTube or on social media. Um, my favorite frames for y'all to check out are the Faraday, the Nash, and the West. I'm a Kepler guy myself. J-Bone loves the Kepler. Spend 2022 with the healthiest eyes you've ever had. Right now, with Felix Gray. Use our URL, felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP to support the show and get free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges. Non-prescription and prescription available. Check them out now, felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash RBP. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. It's risk-free, baby. <laughs> Grab your light, this is stuff the Wikipedia when you hide. Stuff the Wikipedia when you hide. Galvarino. Galvarino. That's today's Stuff to Wikipedia when you're high. And that is the end of the segment, Jared. <laughs> Moving on. No, Galvarino was a famous Mapuche. Warrior during the majority of the early part of the Ara Arauco. Ara Ar 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 Tell me how you'd pronounce this word. I hate this job. A R A U. I would say C O. Arauco. Arauco War. Thank you, Jared. He fought and was taken prisoner along with 150 other Mapuche in the Battle of Lagunillas against Governor Garcia Hurtado de Mendoza as punishment for insurrection. Some of these prisoners were condemned to amputation of their right hand and nose. Nose? While others, such as Galvarino, had both hands cut off. They're amputating noses back in the day? Brutal, dude. That's fucked. Galvarino and the rest were then released as a lesson and warning for the rest of the Mapuche. Mendoza sent him to inform General Capalican, somewhere around there, of the number and the quality of people which had entered their land again to put some fear into him, among other means that were tried so that he might submit without coming to blows. When returning to the Mapuche, he appeared before the uh, general and the council of wars, showing them his mutilations, crying out for justice, and a greater rising of the Mapuche against the Spanish invader like the one of Latura, or Lat Lataro? There we go. For his bravery and gallantry, he was named by council to uh, command a squadron. So this is where it gets crazy. So Galvarino, with knives fastened on both mutilated wrists. Oh my God. Replacing his hands, fought next to the general in the following campaign and to the Battle of Miarapua, where his squadron fought against that of Governor Mendoza himself, where he was able to strike down the number two in command. He came uh, commanding as a sergeant and, uh, oh, this is a speech he gave. He animated his men this way. 
Hey, my brothers, see that you all fight very well. You do not want to be as I am without hands. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's true. Effective. So that you will not be able to work or eat if you do not give it to them. I don't know what that last part means, but... uh, And then he raised both arms on high, showing them to cause them to fight with more spirit and saying to them, those that you are going to fight with, cut them. His hands, he means. And also will do to whichever of you they take. And nobody is allowed to flee but to die, because you die defending your mother country. This guy was a fucking badass. He doesn't like people going AWOL, though. No, he does not. He'll does probably not. cut you with his knife hands. He will go nuts on you with those two knife hands. He moved ahead of the squadron a distance and said with a loud voice that he would die first, and that he thought... Oh, he would die first, and though he no longer had hands, he would do what he could with his teeth. <laughs> well, also the knives... I mean, yeah, you'd think the knives would be a big one. Is he saying, what if they cut off his arms? Because then he's he's going real Black Knight from Monty Python, the Holy Grail here. I'll bite you! <laughs> just just a flesh wound. You've yeah. got no legs, you bastard. Uh, however, Mendoza's command broke Galvarino's division after over an hour of combat and won the battle, killing 3,000 Mapuche and captured more than 800, including Galvarino. Mendoza ordered him to be executed by being thrown to the dogs. However, in the book La Aracana, written by Alonso de Arcia, he explains that the real death of Galvarino was by hanging. Oh, lovely. So apparently, it's another one of those things where it's like a, a an edit, or editorialized, sensationalized story from war. Like, which, was he thrown to the dogs or was he hung? And which is better? Well, we've seen that a lot right now with the whole Ukraine thing too, right? Like, these, there's these stories come out where it's like very motivational and crazy, like the ghost of Kiev, but like nobody actually knows if that's true. That just happens in war all the time. Video game footage. Yes, I saw. I saw the footage of the Ghost of Kiev that people were saying was from a a simulator. Yeah, it was from a video game flight simulator, (laughs) which is ridiculous. It's a weird element of this whole thing. Like people making up fake stories is very bizarre. But if if it's you know, it's a war. But if it does motivate the Ukrainian people, like that's a positive, you know. Yeah, if it's for good, then propaganda is tight. It's just, it's bad when it's evil propaganda. Mm-hmm. Evil shenanigans, you know? What I see, speaking of evil things, I think potentially Galvarino may have been able to win if he had strapped some freaking laser beams on his arms. Yeah. Where was, it, where was he on that one? Go with the Dr. <laughs> evil, man, every time. Knives? Come on. He was, he, even he knew they sucked. He was like, I'm going to go out there and use my, I'm going to bite these fuckers. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Was it a butter knife on your fucking arm? These dull knives? That's all the only two (laughs) knives they had. He's like, these aren't going to cut anything. Fuck it. They're fucking butter knives. Ah! (laughs) Imagine, okay, imagine you see Galvarino running at you with his teeth gnashing, and he has his knife arms behind him, and he's Naruto running at you. Naruto? Remember, you know the Naruto run where you have arms behind you, and you're leaning, wearing a trench coat? Weren't those jackasses going to storm Area 51 (laughs) doing their Naruto, Naruto run? Yes. <laughs> With knives on their hands? No, not that last part. Oh, anyway. Actually, would you ever storm Area 51? No, dude. I don't even want to know what's in there. I have no interest in knowing. We have. A, I've said this time and again. I don't give a shit about UFOs. I don't give a fuck if there are aliens among us. I don't care. We have enough problems. I cannot focus on having to join Men in Black right now. Although I would like it sometimes if somebody would hit me with one of those men in black just reset yeah. things like just you're you're saying you wouldn't clap alien cheeks. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do you think aliens have cheeks? Have they all passed them? Maybe they just have a butthole. I'm no barely cheeks. barely for interracial coupling, Jared. How am I gonna root for <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh we gotta have some fun with racism while it's still here. Forever. Right, Jared? <laughs> no? Back right. to you, Jared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why'd you hit the back to you, Jared button? <laughs> You've clearly got nothing. You've got nothing going. Why are you throwing it back to yourself via soundboard? What a silly move. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bird Dogs. And we have a new code. Listen, 
Bird Dogs, making the most comfortable shorts in the world with the built-in underwear you know and love for living life and making love. It's like, why wear shorts with underwear when you can wear even better shorts with built-in underwear? Thus creating less laundry, thus saving the planet, thus making you a hero who is better looking and more comfortable. Bird Dogs, you silly bitch. But did you know they make pants as well for the winter months when it's cold? But not just for when it's cold. Pants for work, pants for play, pants for golf. Their new joggers are incredible. Jared and I are wearing them all the time. We love them. Bird Dogs. Check out the new joggers on birddogs.com. Grab yourself a pair. You can wear them to sleep, wake up, work out in them, go to work. Don't shower ever again. And and you'll look great. My Everybody record will is, say you look great. They yeah. say you smell you smell terrible, but you look great. My record is four days of wearing the same pair of Bird Dogs. And what's more, for being an RBP listener, when you use the code ROSS at checkout on birddogs.com, Bird Dogs is giving away free whistling footballs like the Nerf football you grew up with loving. But a bird dog's whistling football that says bird dogs on the side. It's orange and it has a blue tail with the bird dog's logo on the back in white. Use code ROSS, R-O-S-S, ROSS, as in the Ross Bolin podcast, when you check out on birddogs.com so that uh, you can help out the show. We appreciate you. Code ROSS. It's a new code. New code, ROSS. Birddogs.com. Go today. Now. Do it. For us. Jared, let me ask you a question. Uh Uh-huh. Do you think... The Domino's Pizza Tracker is real. And when I say real, I mean accurate and honest. Okay. Real as hell. I thought a lot about this. I I ordered a lot of Domino's growing up. I was the orderer in my family growing up. And whenever we got Domino's or like a pizza that had with the tracker thing, I would always watch it and inform my family about, you know, when the pizza was coming. I do personally believe that there is some merit to it. But now the more that I think about it, I think I'm a fucking idiot. How the... F- There's no way some fucking employee in a Domino's yeah. is going, oh, look, pizza number 78 See, is thing. in the oven. Let me hit the in the oven. There's no fucking way. Like, why the, the fuck? You just blew my mind. I thought until right now that was fucking real. So when you really stop and think about the semantics of it, the specifics of what it would take to make this work, that every single pizza... Every step of the way, they're going over to the computer or on their app on their phone and updating like, and now it's in the oven, and now it's going in the box, and now it's in transit. There's no like, fucking way. There's just no way, right? Like, and it turns out this is something that people have looked into pretty heavily. Like, Huffington Post did a piece in 2017, or I'm sorry, 2014, it was updated in 2017. Um, and basically, like, it's, it's, like, I'll read you this little, little uh, subheader from HuffPost. The tracker is legit, but only as legit as the people in the store let it be. Mm. The fact is, there are a lot of factors that happen in a store that the tracker can't always account for. And so your mileage may vary with the online tracker for those reasons. Because everybody's noticed before at one time or another where the tracker was off. Or something was weird. You were just like, wait a minute, why isn't it still not in route? What the fuck is happening? And then suddenly you like check your door and it's out there. Like, it, it can't be that, you know... What are all the steps? It's like order placed, prep, bake, box, delivery. Yes. Like there is no, like you said, if they're making 30 pizzas at a time in there, you think they're spending the time to update all 30 of those pizzas every step of the way? There's no way. It just can't be done. So I think it's that like when the order comes in, it like starts a timer, right? And then maybe, I guess, if they wanted to, they, I'm, I'm not doubting that they could update it manually. Like if maybe they only had one order right now or something, they were like, let's be real fucking specific for Jerry, who's about to get this pizza. <laughs> yeah, but like, what about the out for delivery one? Like, do they hit, do they mark like, oh, that one's out for delivery? Or is that, is that again, also just timer? Because I don't know if it took this guy five minutes to get to me or 25 minutes. Yeah, to he get punches to me. and punches out, like punches out the order. And then it says, yes, it is out for delivery. And the tracker updates you to let you know it's on your way. So that part is real. Uh, my, so my fiance likes to troll people. So what she used to do back in college is when she'd order Domino's, and it, it, it will tell you, like, John is making your pizza. And then it would be like, Kevin is delivering your pizza. She would go, she, when Kevin came to the door with the pizza, and this is back when they were actually accepting deliveries at the door and not just making people leave it on your porch like we right. do now. She would go, hey, uh, hey, Kevin, tell John I said hi. Acting like she knew John when she just got his name from the pizza track. Wow. <laughs> Ridiculous. Troll family. Mm-hmm. Y'all are going to be mm-hmm. 
Family of trolls. Yeah, my my kid's gonna be a troll. So yeah, I guess it depends. Like they don't actually have to do the clocking out part either. Now that I'm reading further, but here's the thing: delivery apps have totally turned this on its head because it pretty much just outs all the restaurants because it tells me exactly where my delivery driver is. So like I know that the restaurant's being slow because my delivery driver's been there for like you know 15 minutes just waiting on my fucking order. And I'm like, I don't blame the delivery driver. I blame the restaurant. You know what I appreciate that they started doing? And this this was a pandemic thing for a lot of restaurants. Like, with delivery, food delivery services before, if you ordered, like, you know, Shake Shack, they'd just, like, bring you the shit in a bag. Well, then people started noticing, like, or thinking, like, this motherfucker ate some of my french yes. fries. <laughs> and uh, then they started taping the bags and, and keeping them closed, in theory. I appreciate that very much because I was one of those paranoid people who was like, this motherfucker's taking my french fries. You know how often I've ordered a shake with something and they, the whole order comes and not the shake? You know who's having that shake, Jared? My driver. <laughs> my driver who I tipped before he delivered the meal, which what the fuck is that, dude? That doesn't make any sense. How can I tip for something that hasn't been done? <coughs> it's gratuity. I'm supposed to tip based on performance. Yep. That's how tips work. I agree. So when it's like, I'm having to tip 10, 15, 20%, those are the options on the screen, before I can place my order all the way, that's insane. And yeah. that is the case with like DoorDash and shit. They go, oh, it all goes to the driver. And it's like, yeah, but do I, I want it to? it all goes to the do driver. Do I want it to? He hasn't even brought me my fucking milkshake yet. He's probably going to drink it, and then I've already tipped 20%. So not only did you tip him like $8, you just he, gave him a fucking milkshake. He drank my fucking milkshake. <laughs> I he drank, drank it up. Milkshake. <laughs> I've abandoned my boy. I've abandoned my ch- milkshake. It sucks, dude. They need to stop with this. Stop making me tip before a thing has even occurred. Dudes are taking fries and milkshakes. They can't. That's the thing about the sealed bag. It, they can't protect, protect the shake. Dude, what if... What Put if, the fucking shake in the bag or something, man. They're, they're taking these shakes from us. And fast food nation needs to know. What if our delivery driver is, like, putting his penis and in or around any of the food that we deliver or order? Have you ever seen Waiting? It's entirely possible. Have you seen the film Waiting? Oh, yeah, they scratch the dandruff into the shit. Or uh, they, they put their fucking nuts on stuff, dude. Burgers and stuff. Dude, how many people have eaten cum? Unknowingly, because of a because uh, of delivery that's some search. sociopathic shit. If you're going and jacking off at somebody's food, you're you're next level lunatic. That's insane. It really is because you wouldn't even get to see them do it, which I would think would be the reason why you wanted to do it in the first place. I don't know, Jared. I don't try to get to the bottom of this like you do with people who fuck their collections. Well, they do. And now that I'm starting to collect F1 cards, you got you better watch me. You better fucking yeah, watch me for somebody who just started a collection thing. Anybody who's buying one of these packs off you on twitch.tv slash formula bone needs to be careful. Now, the, the, now it, the, to, be, to be clear, you're going to have sex with them. <laughs> I intentionally am collecting cards and not something more fuckable so people don't assume I'm fuck. How do you fuck cards? You get a paper cut. How do you fuck a stamp, Jared? <laughs> cut, cut. How, do you, how do you fuck a shoe, Jared? You've accused me of having That's sex a lot with, easier. My, with my collection. It's a lot easier. You, you tie your penis to it and then... And then, and then hold the soul. How do you think sex works? <laughs> when, a, when a mom and a dad really love, love each, each other. Either love each other or hate each other very much. Or sometimes both. Or sometimes or sometimes one likes him or her, but the other one doesn't, but, but they still have sex because they want kids. That often happens. When any of those things happen and then, and then daddy's horny, he, he has sex with mom. That's right, Jared. Which involves tying your cock to something. <laughs> Do you think there's anybody out there who has a, a flaccid penis long enough to tie into a knot? Is there anyone alive out there? Can anyone hear me? Certainly there is. It's Titanic. Um, yeah, there's definitely somebody who's got a dick long enough to tie in a knot. For sure. I, like, I don't know if your muscle, your, your, the muscles that make up the penis would allow for that level of bendiness. Like, have you ever tried to find the limit of how far your penis will bend? <laughs> I've no, no, because that's terrifying. Like the angles that that you could hit or Absolutely. whatever. I've heard too many stories of people breaking their penis on like the ER TV shows. I know, man. That's like one of oh. my biggest. It's Ooh. every. I think everybody who's ever done reverse doggy style's biggest fear is that your dick will get snapped in the half. Fuck is reverse doggy style. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> reverse cowgirl.
<laughs> the fuck would that even be? <laughs> well, I guess if I had to say like what reverse doggy it's style face is, fucking. it'd be like, all right, start in doggy style, then you sit down and she like backs up on you, sort of. I, 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 I think we've gotten through like 470 episodes without me ever describing a sexual position. But That's it not just a happened. sexual position. <laughs> It's, re- not, it's reverse doggy style. That's not a th- it doesn't mean anything. It's doggy style in reverse. That's just, uh, that's just it's reverse <laughs> doggy style. Get with the times. Learn a new sex position. You're what? about to be married. You're going to need to bring the spice. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I, for like 20, how old am I? Tw- I just turned 29. I don't know. Oh, it was just my birthday, by the way. Please clap. Oh, Please happy, clap. happy birthday, Jared. Thank you. Wow. I'm 29 now. Look um, at you. I, until I was 26, I thought it was called donkey style. Oh. No, it's not. You were confusing the donkey punch, I believe, <laughs> with doggy style. I, I'm not even sure the donkey punch is PC anymore, man. I don't even know if you can get away with it. I don't know that anybody was ever in my lifetime, frankly. I've never known anybody who's been like, I actually did this, and it was dope. I'd be like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm ask, I think I'm conflating it with the donkey show I went to in Tijuana. Oh, Where they yeah, do do it donkey too. style because they're donkeys. <laughs> Because it's actually a donkey. <laughs> the fact that those exist is still one of the most disturbing things about human beings. Like, there's really, we, we're, we're a fucked up species, but the fact that there is a show, you go, and you pay to watch someone make love to a donkey is so insane to me. Okay, if you, let's say this. You're on, a, you're on a ton of molly. Would you rather go to a donkey show or a ping pong show? Ping pong. There isn't a drug that makes me change that answer. All right, let's try acid. No, it's still ping pong. Okay, what about you try you try psilocybin and you think you're a donkey? Ping pong. <laughs> a donkey wouldn't want to go to a ping pong show. A donkey would rather go to a donkey show. I don't think so, man. <laughs> I disagree. I think donkeys would get real into ping pong if you gave them those two options. You think donkeys would be good at... What's, what animal would be the best at ping pong? It's a, it's it's donkey sexual enslavement, frankly, is what it is. Oh no, Peter it's fucked up. Definitely well, not happy about it's it. It's bestiality. I don't know. calling it a donkey show is just a way to somewhat. That's not even really yourself. giving an effort. <laughs> it's not even trying. It's not trying at all. That's the that's the worst part about the donkey show is that whoever named it didn't even try to conceal what it was. You know what I never thought about until right now. You know how people like go to go to like if you have a horse. You maybe you go to like you, they have show horses, right? They, sure, they, they sure. dance around, do equestrian stuff. Or maybe you go to a car show to look at cars. What if you breed really rare and fancy donkeys? Does anybody give a shit? Well, can, you can you can't call it a donkey show because oh, people man. think you're. Fu- I yeah, I, I raise show donkeys. That's what I do for a living. And they're like, what the fuck? This guy guy raises donkeys. That fuck. This is a real dog and pony show here. <laughs> I had to Google it to make sure I knew what it meant. Dog and pony show. You know how some old phrases are just like really fucked up? Yeah. You don't want to use them anymore? Yeah. Yeah, that one I wasn't so sure about. Like it's raining cats and dogs. But we were just talking about how a donkey show is a very, very inappropriate and illegal act. I didn't know. I wasn't confident that a dog and pony show didn't (laughs) originate with people paying to watch a dog get... Get, I'm assuming get fucked by the pony. I'm assuming the pony takes dominance over the dog. A pony, bro? You think a po- Well, no, now that I'm thinking about it, dogs are so horny, man. They are. They'll hump anything. I think the dog was probably banging the pony. Do so you, you had to get a big dog. Do you think they do it doggy style, donkey style, or pony style? <laughs> <laughs> also, that's how unicorns are made. Dogs and ponies. Where the fuck does the horn come from? <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you'd like to work with Jared and I in some capacity, you can do that and be part of the cause for this show's existence with uh, internship opportunities that are wow. being put up on bowlandmedia.com slash join us. That's bowlandmedia.com slash join us. And I'm assuming you have to lowercase all the letters and join us, <laughs> uh, by the way. One of them is a business development internship. It's going to be a commission-paid position, plus uh, assisting. you'll be assisting our director of partnerships with a few tasks like air checks 
etc., which means pulling ads from the show. Um, you could do it completely remotely if you needed to, but Central Texas Residence is preferred. Apply at bowlandmedia.com slash join us. We're also looking for video interns. Video interns. Video editing interns. Yeah, we need uh, we need interns who have the ability to use... what What is... What are the programs yes. that, are, that we use? I'll run you through here. So these video internship opportunities, we open these up every so often. So a lot of people are like, hey, I'm looking, I would really like to help you guys out with content. You can, if you have pretty good experience with Premiere Pro. That's Premiere the, Pro. Premiere Pro is the only all Photoshop experience, always very much preferred. But Premiere Pro, if you have good experience at, you can make clips. Well, I, you know, we'll that is the you, minimum we yeah. want you to bring to the table is yes. the ability to make clips. And if you're saying, "What's a clip?" We're talking about the things you see on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, the little one-minute, two-minute videos from our podcasts. You will be uh, taking the full video of the podcast and creating little clips from that video um, with by working with Content yes. Cade. Content Cade. So Content Cade would be your manager. He would work with you, train you up to get all the clips to look like how we post them. Because a lot of people. You know, we have a specific way we make them. So if you have the experience in Premiere Pro and are easily teachable, we can definitely work with you. If you don't know Premiere Pro, please, keep, we'll keep you in mind for further things, but we don't need you for this specific. Yeah, so video internship uh, opportunities, video editing, and uh, the business development internship that I mentioned earlier. And we're also looking for any real social media yes. badasses, social media internships. And what you would be doing is running some of our social media accounts for our different brands, depending on what you're most interested in and, and how good you are. The Ross Boland Podcast, Formula Bone, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, Banging the Can. We've got a lot going on. Yes. And uh, we need some help with the social media side of it as well. So, yeah. Um, if you're somebody who was like, oh, I really want to do content for Boland Media, but I don't know how to use Premiere Pro, the social media internship is a very, very good one. can include a lot of different things. You'll be posting the clips of the interns and us make can be making memes it can just be you know doing a bunch of social media polls, scheduling polls all engaging stuff. social stuff that's what we're looking for so um definitely holler it as your level of experience uh you know certainly matters but yes. um but also we are are willing to give people an opportunity if they seem like they'd be worth it so hit us up go to bowlandmedia.com slash join us and fill out the little uh fucking form that's there yep that's j-o-i-n-u-s all lowercase yes bolin media b-o-l-e-n media.com slash join us appreciate you also uh every friday jared and i drop an ad free episode on patreon.com slash ross bolin podcast just for supporters of our show that's the only people who get the third episode each week we do on monday we do on wednesday or whatever based on our schedule or who's on vacation or covid or you know whatever's going on um but two a week are free right here on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. And then we do a third that's exclusively available with all new content to our supporters on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. Why do I call them supporters? Because you pay, you pledge a minimum of $5 a month to uh, officially join the RBP gang, as it were. And uh, that money goes to support our show. Patreon takes a very small cut. And that's one of the biggest ways we've been able to fund our business and keep things going at Bolin Media through the pandemic and through all the crazy life changes that I had. So we're so thankful to everybody who's already there on Patreon or who's been there on Patreon. We appreciate you so much. And any of you that haven't been, Jared and I very highly recommend it. Um, some of those episodes end up being the best episode of the week. And if you've never been on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast, there is an enormous backlog of content that you immediately gain access to when you join and support uh, and pledge your uh, $5 minimum pledge to uh, support the show. So go today, Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. You'll also see a Enforcer and OG tiers. The Enforcer is a $10 minimum per month. The OG tier is a $100 minimum for people looking to give a lot to support the show. Um, we appreciate everybody in both tiers. Those two tiers also get mental health mini-sodes every month, uh, as well as some other cool stuff. So make sure you get patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast into your browser window after the podcast ends shortly. And join up to make sure that Boland Media can continue to grow and that RBP can continue to be a show. We appreciate you. Follow us on social media at the Ross Boland Podcast on Instagram, at the Ross Boland Podcast on TikTok, at Ross Boland Pod on Twitter. Jared and I will be back on Friday at Jared Borislow on Twitter and Instagram, at WR Boland on Twitter and Instagram for my social. Until next time, peace be with you and also with you.